Hi everyone and welcome back to Windows Hustle, Great Gardening, this is Alex and today's video is my end of March slash first of April um, Windows Hill tour. I know I usually make it right on the end of the month but um, it was actually my birthday yesterday and I wasn't wasn't feeling that well and I wanted to be able to see my family later on in the day so uh, I didn't get a chance to make it but hopefully it's worthwhile waiting that extra day or maybe it won't upload until tomorrow but we'll see. Um, this is also a really special video for me because we've just hit 4,000 subscribers yesterday which is massive and uh, I just want to thank you all very much I never expected to get such a high quantity because you know I'm just a guy making videos about plants that are on my windowsill but obviously you guys seem to enjoy it so that's awesome and uh, we'll get on, with, get on with the video so we've got a very rare bit of sun and uh, I thought at first I would set off as we usually do on this right hand side but um, I'll just explain some of the changes that have taken place this month because there's, there's a couple. So, first off, the biggest one is obviously that I don't have the silver foil bit on the top anymore because now that the sun's getting much higher in the sky, it was genuinely becoming painful to look at my window, so, which is the last thing you want uh, to have your eyes burnt out when you want to look at your plants. So, I had to uh, put this black tray on here. Um, another thing that I've done is just put a small hook in the wall and hung a little fan from it. Um, just to try and keep the temperatures down when we've got strong sun because um, as you can imagine this black plastic gets very hot um, I've recorded temperatures of like 40, 40 degrees celsius coming off this um, so obviously the, the cooler air moving over it can help out so let's get started so um, the Hawthia probably had the biggest changes in terms of the fact that I've actually repotted many of them so as you can see, things like this truncata, I've repotted and I've switched it sideways. Um, there were two reasons for the repotting, and the first one was that the likes of this plant here has got, although it looks very small, it actually has quite a huge deep root system. So I ended up moving it, and uh, I put it in the pot diagonally just to give it a little bit more space to grow. And um, the second reason was so that I had a consistent soil mixture between all of the hawthia just so um, I can water them at very similar times. So the next up is the Hawthia Grey Ghost. Now I'm going to be splitting this video into two parts again, uh, just so it gives me a little bit more time to talk about each plant, and um, hopefully you guys like that. So the next up is the Hawthia Limifolia. Now this guy's actually developed some roots, which is great, because when I bought it, it didn't have any, um, but it's, it's doing really well. And then last up on this uh, on this corner is the Hawthia limifolia variegate. So it's just the same as this one, but it's variegated. You can see by those stripes on it. And uh, again, it's doing well. There's a little bit of new growth in the centre, but uh, limifolia tend to be quite slow. Well, in fact, Hawthia in general tend to be quite slow. So next up is the Gastorallo. And I've been calling this a Gastorallo flow, but one of my uh, subscribers... Uh, challenged that and said that it may not be that and it may be something else but I'm going to do a little bit more research into it and try and find out what it is for the next tour. So this one here is the Hawthia Pygmae uh, Argentio Maculosa Humor. I had to pause the video there and try and remember what it was because it's just such a mouthful I always forget. But it's not doing much but it has opened up a little bit which is good to see. Um, the next one is the Hawthia tessellata, a uh, little bit of new growth in the centre. And then this one's the Hawthia mutica var nigra. You can see it's got a little bit of a brown leaf on this side, I'm not too sure why that is. I actually repotted it the other day just to check and see what was going on, but the roots seem fine, the stem seems fine. So I'm not sure on that one, I'll just keep my eye on it. And then down here we've got the Hawthia rutusa. I'm pretty sure that's what this is now. Um, now that it's started to grow a little bit, it it's starting to look like it with, with like the, you know it's a reducer, because it tends to have a, a look of a bent back thumb on, on the edges of leaves. And then this one, again the same person who commented on the Gastorallo said that this may not be a Tortuosa but a, um, a Gilbrata or something along those lines. And I actually thought that myself and uh, I contacted him. Uh, the guy I bought these from a couple of weeks ago actually and asked him the, the very same question but he seemed to think it wasn't so I don't know I'm I'm pretty convinced it is but he's the whole author expert I'm not 
Um, this is the Hawarthia Black Major. These two both are. And I'm pretty sure that this white coating on, on the edges of the leaves is actually damaged from, from cold temperatures. Um, so I think the new growth won't exhibit it, but we'll see. I, I mean, that's just my, um, my hypothesis at the moment. I haven't got any proof of that. It was just from speaking to uh, uh, Bill, the Hawarthia man. He seemed to think the same thing. This is the Hawarthia fasciata or attenuata. I'm not too sure which one. I need to look into that, actually. I keep saying that every month. But it's got lots of new growth in the centre of um, each of the little uh, pups. And the one at the back are still red. But they have, as you can see a little bit, they, they have actually started to develop some green. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So the cuspidata, this obviously, as you can see, this one's also been repotted um, into terracotta. And we'll see how it gets on. And then I almost missed this one, but this is the Hawarthia obtusa. Um, it's got a couple of names, actually, but I'm just calling it obtusa. But you can see why it's one of my favourites. I just love the way that the light passes through it. I've actually got another one of these coming soon. Um, so we'll see how that one is. And then this is the Hawarthia Simbiformis variegate with uh, two pups on the side and it's actually in flower at the moment. You can see one of the flowers is opened. I'll just turn that around for you. It's not a particularly impressive flower, but if anything, it's just a sign that the plant's happy. So, yeah. It's a shame I don't have any other Hawarthia uh, in flower at the moment because it could have cross-pollinated. That would have been an interesting little experiment. So next on we'll move on to this little dish here. So these are some of, my, some of my propagations. So this has changed a little bit. I've removed one plant and I'll show you that one in a second. But uh, starting from this side, we've got Echeveria or Echeveria nodulosa. Um, it's rooted and then we've got some little Adramiscus. These white leaves on the bottom are um, Echeveria prolifica variegate leaves that I actually removed from this just to allow me to stick the stem deeper into the soil and then these lot here are mostly um, Graptopetalum mirinae um, but then there's also Graptopetalum blackberry leaf somewhere in there I can never distinguish the two because they're very similar and then these two leaves here and here are the um, Graptopetalum mirinae variegate leaves if you didn't see my unboxing video that I just did recently of the uh, rare succulents, that's what it's called, check that out because there's some pretty cool, cool ones um, and just explains a little bit about them and what they'll end up looking like eventually. So this purple one in the centre is Echeveria Duchess of Nuremberg and then we've got a uh, Pachyphytum compactum leaf there, uh, this one. And then Echeveria Black Prince, Sedum Mendoza, and then Graptopetalum bellum, uh, Dondo, Echeveria Dondo is uh, this one here. And then we've got Lilacina, and then we've got two Black Prince variegate leaves, which I'm really excited to see what happens with those. And then I think that's pretty much it. There's a couple of di other different ones in there, but... Um, oh yeah, on this right hand side we've got three Chroma leaves. So there's one there and two here. Um, and then we'll move on. So in here we've just got the top of the Black Prince, uh, sorry, not the Black Prince, the um, Pearl von Nuremberg that was kind of destroyed in my greenhouse. And it's rooted, I just kind of had it floating on water. Um, and then this is the uh, Tomentosa, the Bear Paws plant, Colitodon Tomentosa. And uh, it's grown away, not particularly quickly, but it is. And then this is a new addition, so this is uh, Crashula Hummel Sunset. So it's a bit like my big jade. Sorry, I skipped over the jade. Um, so there's not too much that's changed this month in terms of the jade, but I have actually pruned this left one. Um, so I've let the branch get to a certain size, and then when you prune it, it then splits into two. So that's how you build up a, uh, a tree shape, but maybe I'll make another video about that. Um, so that was a Hummel Sunset. And then at the front here we've got Graptopetalum claret. This is one of my uh, rare new plants that I've received from a member of Succulent Leaf Share UK. This is the Echeveria Christian Ryan, and this is the crested Echeveria Christian Ryan. 
or maybe it's reverted to a multi-head, I'm not too sure. This is um, Echeveria uh, Neon Breakers. And then we've got Echeveria Amoena, Sedum Trelisi, Echeveria Satosa, that's a new addition as well, it's like furry, furry leaves. Uh, Grapt Pet on Blackberry. And then these are my little Buddha's temples and they're doing great, they've all rooted and um, yeah, they're, they're doing well. This is the Kalankoi Tomentosa, so it's the panda plant. And it seems to be growing quite quickly actually, I'm surprised at the new growth that's come on that. This is the Echeveria Black Prince that I've taken out the little uh, propagation dish that I just showed you recently. Or just before, sorry. And then these are my cacti seeds. Now, just in the last couple of days actually we've started to get some growth from the, um, oh, what are these called, the Astrophytum Super Kabuto. So you can see the first one there. And then I think there's another two in there but it's going to be difficult to show you with the condensation. Um, so you might just have to take my word for it. But this one's doing quite well as well, you can see in there, there's quite a few now that have germinated and they've actually turned red, some of them, just from a little bit too much light exposure. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you updated on those, maybe do a separate video. And then these are the Echeveria prolifica cuttings, um, just gave them a little bit of water this morning. And then in the same part I've put the Echeveria Q marble because it's just not rooting, I don't know why, I've had it for ages and it's just sat there doing nothing. This is the Echeveria Paris Palace. And if you want to see what any of these new plants look like, if you watch my um, my unboxing video, I actually show you on the on my tablet what these all end up looking like. And then this is actually my last plant that sat in water. This is the um, Gats Pet on Blackberry. It was just because I wasn't sure on the health of these other ones, and so I just want to. If I ever really want to keep a plant that I'm not sure is doing very well in soil, I'll just put a piece of it in water because it's pretty much guaranteed to do well. Um, you'll remember that I had some sedums that were also in water and a little grass petal mirone, but I put the, I chopped the mirone and put it in the mirone pot, and then the sedums were actually outside, so I might end up showing you those a little bit later on. This is my crashing little Buddha's temple. And I think what I'll do is I'll end the video there and I may end up making a two or three part video because I just can't believe it but I seem to have got lots more plants. So I'll end the video there and we'll pick up in the next one and start talking about this Buddhist temple.